Happily Ever After Season 8, Episode 2. Praise the Lord above. Big Ed is back. He's got his pink Crocs on and he's hanging out in the backyard because he is a lawn gnome. Liz isn't too happy to see him sitting on a ride on lawnmower, but Ed lets her know he just borrowed it because it's too hard for him to mow the lawn with a push mower. I'm Ed, I'm 58 years young, and I'm from San Diego, California. Ed is nearly as wide as he is tall. Like, he looks like he's about to die. Liz looks okay. She looks like she's gotten taller. Are you all right? Ugh. Ed has Liz's daughter sit down on the lawnmower, and I know it looks like it could be fun, but I'm just imagining him riding and hitting a rock and her flying off and getting run over so get off ed and liz are now living in arkansas they have liz's daughter for the summer they plan on getting married for real in two months okay i thought that they were already married so why are they on happily ever after isn't everyone already married Ed recounts the beginning of their relationship and how he fell in love with her right away. She sits there looking absolutely miserable. If y'all don't know, he has dumped her like 15 times. They both suck. Then Ed says because of the changes he has made, the relationship has worked out. The changes that I've made to be a better partner to you is what saved our relationship. What a saint. I absolutely believe that Ed has put in so, so much work. It's a new day. Ed and Liz are sitting down to make bracelets with Riley, who spells her name R-Y-L-E-I-G-H. Now, as someone who has worked in customer service, I beg you to please stop making the spelling of your children's name so unique. Nobody likes it. It's not cute. It's not unique. It doesn't make them special. It just gives the rest of us a headache. So I'm gonna be your, I'm gonna be your stepdad. Would you be okay with that? Wow, I wish my mom married a guy with a tattoo like that. He is so cool. He looks really strong in his muscle shirt. Look at his big muscles just hanging out of it. But this is a really cute moment. I think it's sweet that he asked her how she was feeling about it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pinky promise. After bracelets, Riley heads off to bed and she blows Ed a kiss goodnight, but he can't turn his neck because he doesn't have one. So he just blows a kiss to the kitchen instead. Oh, look at that pretty butterfly. Man, he is so freaking cool. <laughs> Liz tells us that she gave up her partnership opportunity at the restaurant because she's an idiot. So now the two of them have gotten into real estate and are currently living off of their savings. So here in Bentonville, Liz and I are planning on, once we pass our state boards to become realtors. They've decided to enlist the help of Liz's daughter to practice showing a home. Fiance. <laughs> also known as Liz and mommy. Mommy. <laughs> That's not your mommy. At the end, she said that Ed did all the talking. Mommy should have done some of the talking. <laughs> I mean, she she's really cute. She looks exactly like Liz. So I'm really feeling the pressure to get this real estate deal off the ground. I need an income stream. What do you mean, Ed? Aren't you making a fortune from all of your merch? Probably not. Cause it's not as cool as my stuff. <laughs> Moving on. We're back with Kobe and Emily. The entire family is on the plane and the kids appear to be very well behaved. Thank goodness for that. They touch down in Douala, Cameroon. Everyone is tripping out because of all the bags that are being carried for them. I guess over there, people take your bags from the airplane to the car for you. 
it's very nice and helpful but for some reason the women are very confused and bent out of shape about this babe what's going on uh, what's happening we only have these two cars can anybody count how many pieces of luggage we have wait do we have enough stuff is everything in the car this is like a circus <sighs> then a bunch of guys stand around kobe and he tells us that this is very normal um they know that they're americans and they're just trying to sell products sometimes it doesn't really matter how much you give them just the gesture of giving that is really appreciated so he was just showing them some generosity before taking off and emily's like oh my gosh babe stop look at this guy's eyebrow uh the white lady is pregnant for him i can't lift one eyebrow like that so anyways the family and friends are already anxious about emily's behavior behave they're very bossy they're very arrogant all of us what we are wishing is to see the character of Emily towards Kobe. I hope you don't get your hopes up. So the next day they go out and get some clothing before he introduces Emily's family to his family. Everyone looks so good. Um, the clothes are beautiful and the mom asked if it was offensive or rude for them to be wearing the clothes and that made me kind of sad but Kobe was like no. From America and they're wearing our you know, cultural outfit, this means that this is a good family. This is, they've accepted our son and for who he is. Emily's dad looks like a badass and her mom is absolutely stunning. Emily's like, give me a bag. I want everything. I have to have it. I want a bag. I want everything. Okay. Then her dad says he feels like a court jester and I wanted to freaking slap him. You're looking like a king. I feel like a court Especially jester. with the hat, right? <laughs> what is wrong with you you're in their country you're wearing their clothing and you're comparing yourself to a clown to them what an idiot what is with the people on this show having such a hard time respecting other cultures i don't get it oh, let's move on to rob and sophie the last time we saw them they got into another stupid argument at the selfie gallery things aren't looking very good I met up with Sophie tonight, hoping that she would come home with me and that we could start getting our marriage back on track. But once again, I'm watching her walk out and walk a whole different direction from me. So Rob leaves alone. Looks like he has a new car though. I wonder if it comes with a block of wood. He's beyond frustrated. He says he really wants to make it work. I care about doing everything that we possibly can to make it work before we start tearing it apart. Sophie is getting a ride home and she's complaining that he is probably complaining about her. I just thought in my head that like, he would just show up and just be like this really great guy again and be how he used to be. But it's the exact same. Oh, gosh, it is only the second episode of these guys and I am already so sick of them. Like if this is going to be their storyline the entire season, I'm probably going to skip over them because it's getting really boring. The reality is, how do you lose your own wedding band? That's the end of the, that's the end of the story. Like, how do you lose your own wedding band? Uh, the next day, Sophie meets with her charming mother in a bookstore. You can tell that these two really like to read. I don't really know why she chose a bookstore because I've literally never seen her read a book in my life. Her mom's like, I think I'll get this romance novel. And Sophie's like, do you read? Do you read? No. She's like, Sophie, John told me that he loves me. I feel that. <laughs> what? So, John, the other night said the L word. Sophie's like, wow, mom. I'm so happy that your love life is going so well. <laughs> then her mom's like, what happened last night, Sophie? More like, <laughs> so what actually happened last night? And Sophie's like, how do you think it went, mom? Rob was a knob, shouting and going around in circles in arguments that made no sense, yeah. gaslighting. Literally, the exact thing. So Sophie went on to tell her mom how horrible Rob was acting and her mom's like, what are you going to do? Even though things ended really badly last night and I stormed off, um, Rob reached out to me this morning asking if I can have a chat with him about moving back in. <sighs> round and round we go. Does anyone like these two? Does anyone want to keep watching their segments? Like, I want to know, please tell me if you want me to keep covering them i did tell you he can't change he's an ass maybe he can reflect on his actions i don't know <laughs> I just like, you talking about that, Rob, that's right? why i'm trying to, i just want him to do that her mom is kind of a bully she's literally teasing and laughing at her for having hope in her marriage ew 
Then she tells Sophie that as someone who has struggled with addiction, she believes Rob has a corn addiction and that's why he keeps doing the same thing over and over again. You're literally... Yeah, but I don't know if he has an addiction. I think he just likes attention from people. Just because he's drug of choice, it's the same behavior and all that. And I don't want to see you go through that. So she basically tells Sophie he's not going to change and she thinks that Sophie is wasting her time. I kind of feel bad for Sophie, but she's the one who keeps telling her mom all of her grievances with her husband so it's her fault. Okay, let's move on to Nicole and Mahmoud. I wanted to say I absolutely hate the red hair color on her. She looked so much better as a blonde, in my humble opinion, but I am always shocked when I see her age. Like, I, I cannot remember or fathom that she's 40 years old. She looks like a 12-year-old Peter Pan. Mahmoud arrives. She runs up to him and gives him a big hug and tells him, Kiss me, you mother... <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> wow, isn't that romantic? She's like, come on, let's go. Wait, I, I love you. Do you love me? Do you, do you, uh, Are you okay? Yes, honey, I'm just tired. Uh, You're American now, huh? Yeah, I do. Yeah? She's probably scared he's mad about something and is trying to figure out what the problem is. I'll tell you what the problem is. You showed up to pick him up in a very fitted dress when you know damn well that he has a huge problem with that. The fact that you are in a different location isn't gonna change that. <laughs> Does that make you uncomfortable? Yeah. She's all over him, trying to kiss him. Again, he has made it very clear he isn't comfortable with PDA at all. She lives like that, I know, but like as Muslim, I'm not like, feel good to do that wrong people. But she's like, you're in America now, so we can do whatever we want. Well, I was in America, I can do whatever I want to. <laughs> As they're walking out of the airport, he tells her to cover up. And she's like, what are you talking about, Mahmoud? He is so clearly uncomfortable. And she just doesn't get it. To show you, starting to... <laughs> just don't even ruin a nice so moment. So you start, don't start, <laughs> so don't start and say, don't turn him after that. <laughs> She's like, Mahmoud, I know the rules here. We're in America. I'm an American. In Egypt, I, I don't know like how far you can take it, but here nobody cares, so. <laughs> he cares, Nicole. Your husband cares. They get in the car and he is very clearly not in a good mood. She's trying to pretend like everything is fine. He's like, it's so quiet here. Where are all the people? All I see are cars. I come here just like, I can't see just car, no people walking. It feels weird for me. He's like, babe, I'm sorry. I'm just so tired. So she shows him inside of the apartment. She's got several nude mannequins. One of them is in the kitchen and he's like, are you freaking serious? I just do not understand what Nicole doesn't get. Like modesty is extremely important to him. It's so simple. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills watching these two. Then she takes him into the bedroom and he's like, why do you have so many pillows? Why would you have all these pillows if you're not going to sleep with them? This doesn't make any sense. We have to deal with that every day. <laughs> Get them off and put them when we go back. It's like a little weird. Then he turns around and hanging on a wall is a hideous painting of a nude woman with a huge bush. Nicole's like, I painted that. <laughs> seen something like that before. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but it looks so weird. It looks weird? You don't like your wife's artwork? <laughs> no. I personally love painting, and I appreciate a lot of other people's artwork, but this... <sighs> then she's like, here, look, I got you a present. He opens it up, and they're little shorts. <laughs> okay, honey. This is so nice. You like it, really? <laughs> I think so. Their pajamas? Where's the pajama shirt? If I was Mahmoud, I would be thinking, what is this harlot doing? Her apartment is just this sin infested scum hole. Even her hair is red like the devil. And so, so why not have clothes now? <laughs> she, it doesn't matter. She's a plastic doll. <laughs> So weird. She's like, I was expecting you to be way more happy than you are. I am so annoyed that you didn't sleep on the plane. Yeah, I'm gonna tell my word is into you. I promise. And that's it. 
Last and least, we have Gino and Jasmine. I don't know what happened to my recording, but somehow I cut off Jasmine telling Gino how hard it was for her to get pregnant, but thankfully it also cut out the foot sucking. I watched it when it aired and it literally made my stomach sick. I am so glad that something happened and it didn't record because I do not want to look at it again. So you're not going to see any pictures up on my screen about no feet, sickos. I think it was just another plug for her OnlyFans, honestly. She's like, oh, I have a foot fetish. Get out of here. So she told Gino that it was very difficult for her to get born, I think with her second child, um, that she had to do like hormonal therapy and get shots and all of this stuff. And that if they wanted to get pregnant, they were gonna have to do it a whole bunch of times. And if this was a true storyline, I think Gino would have been absolutely devastated, but it's not. So he's super understanding and tells her it's gonna be fine and she'll get pregnant the good old fashioned way. I think it's gonna naturally happen and, and you'll get pregnant when you least suspect it. Then they pack up their crap and leave, never to return. I, I never wanna come back. So after the honeymoon, Jasmine FaceTimes her mom and sister to check in with them. Mother and my sister are the ones taking care of my children because I wouldn't trust any other person in the world. And your ex-husband, don't forget about him. Her sister tells her the kids really miss her. Her mom tells her she's in a lot of pain and it's depressing. Then the mom hangs up and Jasmine's like, Y yo estoy por acá, niña, que yo ni siquiera puedo irla a ver. Yo ni siquiera puedo acompañarla. O sea, si ella sale mal. Her sister's like, chill out. And they hang up. Now it's the next day. And Gino and Jasmine are headed to an immigration lawyer to get the process started so her kids can come to America. His service or any other attorney's service, I'm sorry, but we are getting an attorney. No, because I put too much hard work into this. Did you just tell Jasmine no? She's going to cut you. Right now, I don't have the money to pay for a lawyer. So why are you guys here? To waste everyone's time? You're wasting my time. So they meet with a lawyer and Gino's like, I did the paperwork all by myself. And the dude's like, oh, yeah, you did it wrong. Because they're not listed, it's going to be impossible to, you know, bring them over. He tells him that Jasmine can go to Panama if she wants, but there was never any paperwork filed for the kids. So if they want the kids to come, it will take like eight to 12 months. And that's if they have the lawyer. If I would have had both on the petition, Including. we would have been good, good. Absolutely. Go. We could wow. have them sitting here in six months. Oh, he's a dead man. The lawyer's like, I could do this for you, everything included for five grand. And that would ensure that the kids are here within a year. Otherwise, it's likely going to take like two years. Hey, I think, I think that's what he said, if I remember correctly. We charge about $5,000. That includes your filing fees. Mm -hmm. You blew it, Gino. And now we get to watch Jasmine ugly cry. Yeah, that it might take about two years to go here. <laughs> Tune in next week to watch Kobe and Emily get remarried. Because we didn't get married in a traditional way in Cameroon, my dad doesn't fully look at you as my wife. Rob writes Sophie a terrible love note that sounds like a list of instructions. Remember that we're trying to move forward and don't focus on the past. Super basic. Nothing crazy. What is the point of this? Ed and Liz fight in front of her daughter and piss me off. You're getting flour everywhere. There was no mess. Mommy's being a crybaby, outing, and stop. you're ruining the event. You stop being a brat because you're ruining it. Mahmoud notices a Muslim woman, and Nicole gets jealous. If you want an Arab woman, you can go back to Egypt. Yeah. Okay, f I, I will. I'm done now. In Good. If you've been a fan for a while, please consider hitting that join button down below. Um, also, I've opened up an Amazon store. I launched it, it's in the description below. It's full of stuff that I have in my own house. It's stuff that I use on a daily, if not a weekly basis. So a lot of that stuff would make great gifts. Go check it out. And that is it for this one, you guys. I will see you later this week. Leave me some comments below. Let me know what you guys think about all of these couples. And I will see you later. Bye. I think my filter is haunted. Oh. <laughs>
<laughs> Hello? Filter? Fix. Fix yourself. There you go. Ha <laughs> ha! Pull up, pop up, then I swear that pop.